Hi, I'm Monique from Monique Field Property and today we're going to discuss the buying process after your offer is accepted. In a sale by private treaty, there's a verbal agreement between you and the vendor or agent to purchase the home. However, don't start celebrating the deal just yet. Neither you nor the vendor is legally bound to proceed with the purchase until contracts have been exchanged. This can be a worrying time for both parties. Essentially, all you've done is offer to purchase the vendor's property. So until contracts are exchanged, you're in limbo period, which means either party can pull out or you could be gazumped. Gazumping occurs when you reach a verbal agreement on a price with the vendor, but the property is sold to someone else and usually at a higher price. Being gazumped is not only heartbreaking, but it also can be expensive if you've already spent money on building and pest reports, speaking to solicitors, searches and other things. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do to prevent this from happening um, unless you actually pay a 0.25% deposit to have the property removed. And in that period, we'll talk about that later. So to avoid yourself becoming a victim, talk to your agent about this. But having your finance conditionally approved, seeking a copy of the contract of sale as soon as possible, Getting the contracts reviewed by either your solicitor or conveyancer will help you move the process along a lot quicker. Definitely call in the professionals. Both solicitors or conveyancers will look at the contract, discuss the terms and conditions, and ensure the relevant searches and inspections are carried out. During this period, your solicitor or conveyancer will also negotiate any changes to the contract and ensure amendments reflect agreed changes. It is your legal representative's job to ensure that there are no hidden surprises before you take ownership of the property. This involves checking all rates and taxes are paid up and that the vendor is legally entitled to sell. They should also check heritage orders and any other peculiarities of the property. Generally speaking, the vendor will not provide any guarantees as to the structural soundness of the property, so it's essential you seek an independent body to do this for you. Building and pest inspections are generally strongly recommended and your solicitor or conveyancer may also ask you to organise one. Beware of inheriting any illegal renovations. If, for example, the house you're interested in is the only property with two storeys in your street, have your legal representative obtain a building certificate from council to ensure it complies with requirements. They should also be checking planning regulations for the area. Some councils can prove challenging when it comes to granting renovations or building approvals, which means your plans for additions or alterations or to add that extra story or room could prove severely restrictive or if not allowed at all. Exchanging contracts once you're happy with the form of the contract, the necessary checks have been conducted to make sure and you've organised your finance, you then should be ready to exchange on those contracts. There will be two copies of the sale contract, one for you and one for the vendor, and you'll each need to sign a copy of that contract. You will do this at your solicitor's or conveyance office, or sometimes if before, like I said, you're paying a 0.25% deposit, you'll do this with the agent, and they are swapped and exchanged with the vendors. This can be then done by hand or by post, but generally arranged by your solicitor or conveyancer or the agent. At this time, you're required then to pay the full 10% of the purchase price. Some vendors will be prepared to accept a 5% deposit, so it pays to ask before you exchange, as the deposits will be listed in the contract. The contract will include a settlement date, which is the date that the property becomes yours. If the property was bought at auction, the exchange of contracts will occur on the day of purchase, or where the auction was conducted. Cooling off periods depend on the state or territory in which the property is located and the terms of the contract for sale. Most buyers of residential property receive a cooling off period with some exceptions, um, such as if you buy at auction, you agree to waive that cooling off period. This period usually starts on the next day of exchange and ends around five business days later. Within this time, the purchaser can withdraw from the sale. However, you will usually forfeit around 0.25% of the purchase price to do so. Depending on the terms of the contract, the cooling off period is usually the last chance to organise pest and building inspections. Um, and as a side note, you should organise written confirmation that you have loan approval before the end of your cooling off period. The date of settlement is when you take legal ownership of the property. The balance of the purchase price also has to be paid on this day. 
Settlement usually takes around six weeks or 42 days from the time the contracts were exchanged. However, it is not usual for settlement periods to be changed, shorter and longer, at the vendor or purchaser's discretion and agreement, and is also reflected on the contractor's sale, on or prior to the settlement date. Ensure before settlement that you've organised relevant insurance documents, signing mortgage documents, obtain funds for stamp duty, and pay the balance of the purchase price. Final inspections on or the morning before you settle is recommended for you to take a final look at the property with the agent. This is to make sure that owners um, or the tenants are really moving out and that they've not removed lightings, fittings, handles or any other inclusions that were noted in the contract of sale. Payment of the balance of purchase price will be handed over to the vendor by the solicitors in return for the title of ownership. You'll then obtain keys and you'll need to arrange to collect keys from your agent. And a good tip is to change your locks because you don't know if a tradesperson, a cleaner or somebody else prior has access to your property. And now the property is yours. Congratulations. You own your new home. It's time to open that champagne. If you're thinking of selling and you'd like some independent advice or a confidential discussion, don't hesitate to contact me. I'm Monique from Monique Field Property.